I mean, for the introduction for the first one, the honest truth would be, well, with the Your Film Podcast, we don't know what it's called yet, and we don't know what it's going to be, so let's figure it out. <laughs> You know, for the last 30 minutes, none of these shits worked. <laughs> it wasn't us. <laughs> so welcome to the podcast anyway. And as he um, always says, I'm not an audio engineer. I don't know. I've just got the kids. Right, look, um, before we stop, before we go any further, <laughs> hey, we're banging the table. you're going to have to stop banging the table. <laughs> because... They're like Thor's hammers, those hands. <laughs> and me and Mark basically just that's brushed the table before, and this mic was pinging all over the place. Has Thor got two hammers, has he? <sighs> yeah, he has. Well, he's got like an axe one and a Does hammer. Oh, yeah, okay. so there you go. Right um, back at you, pal. I'm, I'm still stuck at the end of uh, MCU Phase 3. I don't oh. know. <laughs> I'm, I haven't seen two hammers, Stay Thor. there. Stay there, because it's much better than what they're doing now. <laughs> Whatever the hell it is now. I did paddle in the WandaVision pool, like, I think that's... Phase four. Phase four. So is that is it still at phase four now? Or is She Hulk <laughs> five? I think we're in phase four. Uh, the, the answer is open up Disney Plus and look at it by phase. Even I'll talking about phases, I mean that's very <laughs> big headed. <laughs> like anyone gives a shit. Uh, well you, appa- you apparently give... millions of people around the world do give a shit oh. to the tune of tens of billions of dollars at this point, so Yeah, they've done well. <laughs> Fair play they've done well. <laughs> but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> is it a pile of shite you might say um, well the last one I watched was Thor Love and Thunder yeah you that, wasn't that, a fan was you that gets a th- two thumbs down a rotten tomato <laughs> and a pile of shite gold star because it was awful absolutely sure it would be a brown star wouldn't it do we need to introduce ourselves first Oh, is this on, is it? We're rolling. Uh, well, this is it. Recording. Very, very quietly, <laughs> and with a lot of background hiss. <laughs> uh, we're whispering. <laughs> no one whispering secrets over here. Um, uh, go on, Matthew, introduce yourself. Who are you? Am I introducing myself to you or to the, the viewers at home? Um, yeah, go on, to the camera. <laughs> I bet you that code has um, run out of batteries already. I'm the top of Matthew's head, <laughs> from what I can say. Introduce me that, really? Well, yeah, just in the context of the company. Let's just do that. I'm Matthew, and I co-founded your film with Kevin in 2005. What else do people need to know? That'll do. So yeah. I'm Kevin. I'm the other half of what he just said. I'm the creative director these days. <laughs> and who are you? I, I, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> <He's got laughs> I don't, I don't know what... Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, what your whistle? I don't, I don't even know what quadrant I'm in. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> The third uh, participant of your film. The third leg um, of this tripod. Third, and I joined about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long has it been? Like? Year plus. It depends on your point of view. I mean, technically, I would say it's now close to two years because it was January of last year. Mm-hmm. But then you could say, well, from when you signed the papers, or then you could talk about the years of work that we did together before that. Well, that's it. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of a grey area there, isn't it? But, I, uh, I counted from January last year. January last year. I so. reckon it's a year and nine months. Yeah. So and it's it's been a hoot and a half, hoot or and just a half. hoot, a hoot and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good to know, Mark. Good to know. Yeah. Well, tell us, <laughs> tell us, mo- tell us more good things, Mark, about how how much you've enjoyed being part of your film. Well, I'm sure we'll get onto that in a in, in, a, in a podcast <laughs> all of its own. Okay, so trying to have any kind Let's of structure of this. Do you want to just explain what we're trying to do here, Matthew? If I knew, I would tell you. Uh, as far as I'm aware, what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, be personable on that and just tell people a bit about what goes on behind the scenes and uh, to, to some degree say the things that maybe people wouldn't expect us to reveal. Mm-hmm. Well, let's explain what we do first before we move into why anyone should listen to her. Mm-hmm. It is quite hard, isn't it? it yeah, it is. To quantify. Do I, do I have to give like, times we've talked about what we actually do? And trying to tell somebody what we do, um, if it's difficult for us, well, let let's have a, a pause here to think, and then actually, well, just something it, succinct that explains. I, I've got it. I, I tell you what we do. We'll help people communicate through video because it doesn't matter what the end purpose of it is. That's mm. what we're doing. There's a message that needs to be communicated. That's what we do. Oh, that's that's like beautiful. It. That's like wiping your ass with silk, that description. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So, for this segment, 
I want to talk about something quite serious. It's something that's come up <laughs> recently for us. We've just been through a period of hiring staff. And as we have done all the way through our company's history, we've hired another quite young person, a recent graduate. And there's a pattern going on that I really don't like at all. And I think it's it's probably been going on for as long as I can remember we've been hiring people that age. So I'm talking about people in the early twenties who've gone to, they've gone through education, they've done the real levels, and then they've gone to uni and done the degree, <coughs> which is what everyone's told they should do. And it's people that are going to uni and they're doing a, a media production degree or media studies degree or something in that vein, thinking, well, when I do this degree, I'm going to come out with that degree in my hand and get a job in the industry. That's not really true whatsoever, is it? And after we've just gone through this latest round of hiring, there was basically piles of CVs that I'd looked at and just thought, they have been sold a lie, basically. And they've done everything that they've been told to do, and they've given me the CV, and all the CV says is, I've been through education. Mm-hmm. That doesn't help me um, whittle, them, whittle that down at all, because when it comes to what we do, and basically at this point, I should have explained, we're hiring someone that we need to come in and, fair enough, be a bit raw, have some raw talent, something that we can we can help them develop, definitely. But um, we need someone that's got a bit of production experience. And it's usually because they're young, something that they've just done off their own back. So it might just be personal projects that they've done, where they're just playing around with the camera and editing. Um, it might be, in some cases, we've had young people that have actually gone out and said to small businesses, I'll make you a promo video for free because I just want to create stuff for a showreel so I can get a job in the industry. Mm-hmm. Every time we've hired someone, that's kind of what their experience has been, hasn't it? So mm-hmm. I will let other people talk about it, but as, you can, as you can probably tell them a bit, hot under the collar about it because I, I felt sorry for some some people that were in that pile hmm. because yeah. no one's been honest with them so can we talk about what if you if you are looking to get in the media industry if you are in education and thinking well what should my next step be we're going to try and like give some honest answers about that now so who wants to go first in terms of what would you say to someone that maybe, let's say they're doing A-levels and they're thinking about what to do for the next step. Should they go to university? Should they go out and get a job? A lot of these things, you know, might depend on where you live in the UK. So obviously there's a lot more opportunities in some cities in the UK than the others. Mm-hmm. I think you've got to be, certainly got to be passionate about something. Certainly good, whatever it is. There's no point just going through education for the sake of going through it. Um, it's going to cost you money if you're going to go on to university if you're going to be doing something that you don't want to do for the next three years you're going to come out with obviously debt and no further forward so I mean there's a lot of distractions out there for and decisions to be made for kids leaving school going on to college and university I think you've really got to think about it not just kind of get swept up and driven along with your your friends that type of thing so I think yeah you need to take a step back really Uh, because I think that's what we've seen coming through with some of these applications and CVs they don't look bothered and you can tell because they haven't got anything to show like you said uh, they'll be the the ones that do shine will be the ones that have gone out and done some video work themselves or found some extra work or if they haven't they've got a good show reel with Mm -hmm. a lot of (coughs) experimentation or animation or whatever it is they've got something there that you can see that from looking at the work they've done they're they're passionate about what they're doing what they want to do and they're going to make a career out of it um so that'd be like yeah before you're even going down that that route like stop and think um yeah well the cvs that we've got (coughs) i'm bypassing what your name is I, i don't care where you live I, I don't care that you're working in Weatherspoons, you know, just to make a couple of quid on the weekend. I'm looking straight away at 
a link. I'm looking to find a link to a video or multiple videos that you're saying this is work I've produced. That work could, and it has been with the people we've hired, it's been work that they've produced at uni. So it could be the projects that you work on on your production course. It's also work that people have just done outside of uni off their own backs. But that is the first place I go. Once I see something there that I like, and I'm not saying, you know, we're, we're not expecting Hollywood productions here, mm. but, you know, we're old and wise enough to see a bit of talent, basically, when, when you look at those things. And we are thinking, whatever we're looking at, we'll help them get better. But that link is the first thing on a CV I'm looking for. Mm. If it's not there, I'm struggling to find any other reason to put you on a pile where I would say, well, let's interview them. <laughs> and that might sound brutal, but that's the truth. And um, it's the only way we can know. So Matthew hasn't been to university. So it might be interesting to hear his take on this one. You're revealing me secret shame, are you? Charming. Well, yeah, but it's just different, isn't it? Because at the time that I chose not to go to university, <clears throat> we happened to be lucky, I think, that in our school we had access, good access to cameras, editing equipment, the first AVID system that we've got to try. I assume, I don't know, that most schools now have a lot more access to technology, but I also know that universities obviously definitely do and have higher end kit. So I think we're all on the same page that the thing that <clears throat> tips someone over the edge if we're looking to hire them is what they've demonstrated in terms of their competence and or enthusiasm for video work, basically. Um, but yeah, so from that perspective, it's like I, I don't think because, uh, but again, you know, I didn't go and try and get a job somewhere. I created my own opportunity, which most people aren't going to do, and that's fine. So in terms of us looking to hire someone, yes, if they can't show us any work, then there's literally nothing for us to go on because words on a page are kind of irrelevant. They tell you some things, but not the important things that we're looking for. But on the other hand, maybe there is an argument to say that if you're going in with the right attitude at university and, and what you get out at the end of it, then go in there to have the ability to mix with other like-minded people and use the equipment and kind of do stuff, which you might not have the chance to do of your own bat. There's an argument there. But then on the other hand... Since we, since you were at university, you know, you've literally got in your pocket a, a filming and editing studio if you need it to be. So it still comes back to, I, I certainly don't think it's essential to go. I think it all comes down to attitude. And clearly, some people go to university or college, uh, apply themselves, and come out with a, a little body of work, just enough to prove that they're actually genuinely interested in it. And that, that's the thing, isn't it? So I, I, don't, I certainly don't think... I, it's not essential, but I wouldn't say don't go. I think it depends on the person's circumstance, makeup, what opportunities they've had. To yeah, and, there's a, and to be fair, there's a lot of universities out there, and I'm sure that there are some university courses that are absolutely fantastic, and at the end of it, you've got a great chance of, of getting a job, so definitely not trying to besmirch every single media style... Um, degree that you can get out there at all but like you said I think the key is if the course is very much theory based and lacking on the production side of things mm. it's your practical make skills the, make use of the facilities there to do your own shit mm -hmm. so that you've got something to show otherwise you know it, like we said I think everyone's kind of looking to see well what What's this person got? What can they do? I think the truthful answer is, as it pertains to us, is that we're always looking for a little a little spark of entrepreneurial spirit in anyone that we hire. A, a bit of evidence that they have a bit of get up and go and have tried to do, even if they haven't succeeded, at least they've tried to do something. I mean, you know, on a technical level, obviously, if they try to do something and it's awful, then that, that's bad. But, like, all the people that we're thinking of that we've hired over the last four or five years, they've come in and said, well... You know, I finished university this summer, but I've already picked up this commission, or mm -hmm. I've found this client that I, you know, like that's that is as long as the work is of a decent enough quality, that is what we're looking for. That's enough to say, right, well, you fit with us. <clears throat> well, the entrepreneurial thing is definitely true, but do you think that that's partly to do with the fact that 
if you're naturally entrepreneurial, it, it kind of indicates that you're quite pragmatic naturally. And when you think of what we do day to day, there's so much creative problem solving that goes on and different challenges that are thrown at that you have to kind of have that personality of like just like taking on a, a project and thinking right how am I well, going to yeah, tell uh, entrepreneurial is probably the wrong word because that implies you know it's about as much about business as anything else it's not that it's about that they've actively looked for or created their own opportunities to do the thing that they say they love doing which is making videos we, we've talked about this we've got some longer term plans where we would love to kind of give access to facilities where people kind of can can come in and, and use maybe slightly better tech than they used to and just do what we did and the, the main thing was it was just like play around make some mistakes learn what doesn't work to, to figure out what works when you say do what you, we did are you describing there the first two to three years of the company because that's what it sounds like well you mentioned before you made your own opportunity so to clarify you're talking about when we started this yeah. company yeah yeah so I mean that's quite an extreme way to go and I don't think it is now though well not everyone wants to run a company they might just want to be part of a, a fun studio where well they right get to but, do uh, one but specific I suppose job. what I mean is like without naming names thinking about people that we've hired in the last couple of years they've immediately gone out and just they're just working freelance basically but they've gone out and found projects and got paid to do work and like they, they don't have to set up a company but they're just demonstrating that like actually the equipment is cheaper than ever more accessible than ever there's plenty of, you know as we said when we first launched in our very first kind of website and marketing and stuff we were talking about how if you've got your own website you've got your own tv channel which obviously the language is kind of laughable in retrospect but the idea is has come to fruition over the last nearly 20 years video is totally ubiquitous so i think the the, the evidence is there that even if you're not looking to build a business which most people aren't that's fair enough if you've got that bit of spark about it, you'll go out and find opportunity if you happen to get paid for it all the better mm -hmm. okay so to kind of finish that off then what what bullet point advice would we summarize that with then in terms of advice for young people and also I, I get asked all the time from parents of teenagers who f when they find out what I do, say, oh, my son or daughter is at uni doing this degree, and I kind of just, I don't know. I almost feel like they're going to say, so will you hire them when, it, when they're finished? And now I'll say, well, actually, there's a podcast you should listen to. <laughs> Get them to follow the steps that Mark's about to impart now, <laughs> and maybe it's a yes. But the other thing to note is, university's bloody expensive. And it's a lot more expensive now than it was when I went. <coughs> and even more expensive than when Mark went, because he's just told me off well, air that he got it for fun out. Yeah, that was the last cohort to get it for. Good for you. Mm. Yeah. God bless you. <coughs> um, Look where I am now. <laughs> Sat here with us two mugs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice level playing field yeah. now. You got it for free. He paid. I didn't go. We're all yeah. sat here with a thumbs up our arse. Level. <laughs> yeah, so point one, don't listen to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, well, uh, genuinely though, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about there, but like the fact that we've all, I know I know you two went to university, but like we've all had different experiences. I know we kid you gently about it, Mark, but I know there is a slight difference in our generations. It was a slight difference. But like we've all had different experiences, we've all had different roads to get here, but like we've all been driven by exactly the same thing. And that's why we're sat here now. Because we we've all been doing the same thing. We just decided to do it together. Yeah, well that's it. I mean, creativity. That's what's that's what's driven us and pulled us together and wanting to do more and better and improve. Um so I think yeah, that that spark is kind of what's driven us, that's what we're looking for. Um the ability to demonstrate that if it's on paper if it's on video whatever you know when i say paper i mean like sketches ideas old school kind of stuff um but yeah just kind of like problem solving as well through a creative process i think that's kind of um i mean i went to university originally to do illustration um and obviously ended up doing tv and film design 
um, which was I'd never thought about it. But illustration, you know, storyboards hand in hand, um, and I got dragged over into animation. So when I left university, or oh, my external assessor for the course was uh, the head guy at ITV. So obviously he was looking for a skill set that he could take from university and put straight into the workforce to get animations produced for TV. Um, I wasn't didn't get the highest grade on the course, but I was the one walking out with probably the high highest profile job, um, and that was basically because I could demonstrate and show that I could do animation or. Uh, use a camera or understood graphic layout and all those things that, that went with it um, and that was something I'd looked into and researched and done throughout university because it is you know you've got to put that on your, your own back and do the research because the tutors are there to kind of oversee you but not really really push you um, so where we can <sighs> We, well, I know what I came out of university with and those around me, and I'm looking for that level, if not now, better, because it was, you know, 20 years ago, or whatever it was. So anything that's coming out of university now needs to be better than what was produced on my course so many years ago. Well, the tools change. Yeah. But it, the important stuff is the passion, creativity, drive behind it, isn't it? Because... Mm -hmm. It's 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 hard working in, in the creative industries. Sometimes it's um, you put everything into whatever it is that you're creating, and then people criticise it, and you've got to learn to kind of, especially when you're doing what we're doing, where mm -hmm. we're not just dreaming up um, TV commercials we want to make. You're making it for someone else. I think I think by people he means me and you criticising. Absolutely. Uh, constructive criticism <laughs> yeah it's not just yeah, you like tearing you down for the sake of tearing you down speak for yourself okay. so, yeah it's a lot more gentle these days after the incident the tantrums I used to have <laughs> 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 I'll, well the thing is I learned a very valuable lesson at some point which was it's probably your feedback it maybe happened a few times in a row where Matthew looked at something and suggested something and I was absolutely adamant don't need to do that it won't improve it but okay, I'll try it. Mm. Tried it and it was better. Mm. And I had to eat, I had to eat it once. <laughs> then he did it again. <laughs> ate it a second time. Still didn't learn the lesson. Third time I was like, you know what? Yeah, you've just got to mm -hmm. like, just relax. Try these things. Don't try an opinion about it until it happens. Um, so what you're saying here, lesson two is... Listen to Matthew. Prepare, That's lesson two. <laughs> prepare to be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You, Have you, your creativity you, quashed. <laughs> You're gonna. It it it's a commitment to improve hmm. all the time. Well, but that's it. the thing, isn't it? It's not about having your creativity quashed. It's about the fact that, as speaking for our team, it doesn't matter who's working on something. It goes out the door with the company name on it, mm -hmm. and it's about just making it the best it can be. So, that that's what it is. It's not about trying to grind anyone down or, or stifle any ideas. Is it? It's just about whatever the thing is has to go out in the best shape we well, can make it. Well, this well, is we why we, we, we talk about like the, the last one or two percent so once it goes out the team there's still kind of comments it's all, it's like you're just polishing it as much as possible mm -hmm. just trying to get those edges and there's so, so many times where you're working on something and you think no one's even going to notice this but it's such a amazing little detail and it's just it's craft isn't it and taking pride in it. So taking pride in it, craft. Well, Improve most skills. More specific advice. to the bullet points, it's just do some work. Mm. Get get some work that you can like show. Don't be scared about the technical quality. Just keep doing stuff. Try stuff. The two, for, the two for me, whether you choose to go to university or not, is do the work and start making connections. Start contacting people. So like. The first person that we no, that wasn't the first, but we hired someone who had left university and was working six days a week in a job he didn't want to do, but the one day a week that he had spare, he was just ringing up production companies and saying, "I'll come and do free work for you for a day, tries out." 
and that's basically what we did we got him in one day he worked on a storyboard we got him in a second time he worked on I think it was a little logo animation and that was enough we offered him a job was it me? no no you would have had to sing for your supper for a lot longer than that <laughs> not just not just two freebies it's funny we you know, danced around um, each other for about five years didn't we? I know yeah Memento's just come on Netflix recently and uh, I have seen it do you remember what it's about, Mark? I do. <laughs> but do you I remember? Do you remember I it forwards or backwards? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I he's watched got the tattoos all over his body. You put your name on one. <laughs> Being completely honest, we interviewed people where the showreel wasn't particularly good because we said, "Well, it's not great, but." think there's maybe a bit of something there mm. let's get them in and just talk to them and just kind of see what they're like so even having anything just proves that anything that we can look at in terms of work gets you in yeah for the interview you're a mile ahead of anyone that hasn't mm -hmm. basically yeah so it's, it's the work more than anything <laughs> close uh, out th thanks for listening everyone <laughs> what, was, what was it to watching it oh Peter, are you going to watch this? I, I don't know what an advert. <laughs> 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 well, we've already said. Well, I mean, look at, they only see the top part of where he's. It's a medication time or what? <laughs> it may be. It may get be. him a packet of beef McCoys and he'll be. Right <laughs> <his> <laughs> <rate>. <laughs> if you like Popeye with a can of spinach, <laughs> 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 every crunch will bring it, us back to, to more health. It's the insistence that the ones from the vending machine are beefy. <laughs> the multi-pack. There are different levels of beef on Beef <laughs> McCoy's. just been in there longer? Listen, belie believe you me, <laughs> I've put the I've put the hard yards in. <laughs> I've tested a lot of different types of Beef McCoy's. I'm telling you, grab bags are where it's at. Right, well, let's... We've got to taste test this <coughs> in the next uh, podcast. Is that the we? next episode, is it? Yeah. Which just McCoy's are crunching? Beefy? Ideally, you want a grab bag from a garage. It'll cost you about £1.90, but like... That. So hang on, you're saying now that the different vendors have different levels of beefiness as well? Yeah. <laughs> nah, <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. You realise that I've already brought this up, Ryan's already tried it, and he's already said that I'm right. He's, al he's already no, no. proven that. The thing about the grab bag versus multi-pack, that's one level. But this what? thing about <laughs> if it's from a garage, that's or a gas station, if you will, <laughs> that they are even beefier again. <laughs> I can't have that, like. Well, I cannot have that. it's... it's I mean, well, let's, okay. Uh, let's look. Okay, okay, okay. However, I believe in science, so let's, uh, t let's I'll, test this. I'll put, a, I'll put a pin in the grab bag thing for a minute because it might be that they've downsized the grab bags, you know, cost of living crisis and all that. But what I can tell you is, if I go to Tesco and get a meal deal, it's a grab bag. But I'm positive that that grab bag is smaller <laughs> than the bigger grab bags that they charge you an absolute fortune for in the garages, as an example. <laughs> a pinch bag or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's more of a pinch than a grab. So if... If I went to the garage and bought one and it's the same <coughs> size as the one in Tesco, then fair enough. But I think that there's actually like two grab bag sizes. I might be wrong on that. So you think you're, you're positing the theory that we're going to test, which is the bigger the bag of McCoy's, the beefier the crisps inside will be. It's a combination of the size of the bag, but also what you're paying for it. Because if you go in and buy a six pack in the supermarket, you're basically paying for that what you would pay for one grab bag in a overpriced garage. Right, so you, th you think so price might be associated with it the is, yeah. beef flavouring. It is, because there. the multi-pack, where you get six half bags, let's be honest, yeah. for the price of one big bag, there's hardly any beef on them shits. Are the crisps in the bag, the bigger bag's bigger? Yes. Is it, right, yeah. so actually, it may be you just that the more surface... Crisps in your mouth. <laughs> the surface... The surface volume ratio of the bigger crisp just means you get more beef flavouring on it, hence the beefier perceived it, taste it, it could be but here's the other thing I think, we'll, I you, think, we'll I think we need to go to the you, factory you actually. will be able to, to test this whole thing out without ever putting a McCoy in your mouth because all you need to do is open the bags and tip them out onto plates and you'll see that the ones that are from the multi-pack are pale as shit mm -hmm. and the ones that come out of the grab bag are like like they've been in the, getting a suntan for a week let's make this happen it's, ta it's time to it's, it's time to find out the truth once and for all. This is the thing that's been keeping you up at 4 a.m., isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you something. That's an off-air conversation. <laughs>
<clears throat> well, if we're going to have off air conversations, let's wrap this one up then. So that's the end of the first episode, is it? Yeah. We're happy with that. That's we're, we're calling that a podcast. We'll see what people think of it, basically. Yeah. And what um, what do you want people to do now? What's well, the call to action, uh, Matthew? Obviously, obviously, they've got to like us on an individual, personal level. But aside from that, like the podcast, subscribe, you know, do all that shit. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. obviously, be prepared for the next one when we'll impart so many more hard-earned pearls of wisdom, won't we, Mark? We certainly will, Matthew. With the emphasis on hard-earned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. And good night. Thank <laughs> you.